Well, I'm Bob McElveen. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, my son, Bobby, died or was murdered on 9-11-2001 at the World Trade Center. My son was 26. He worked at uh, Merrill Lynch, which was across the street from the World Trade Center. He was one of the few bodies found in the beginning. I've been looking into this for 12 years. I've been very active, involved in the anti-war movement. I felt that the country had no right to go to war in my son's name. And I spent a lot of time doing anti-war, uh, demonstrating against the war. I got arrested at the White House. You know, I would carry signs, not in my son's name. I just couldn't imagine a war. I didn't trust the United States story. Going to the 9-11 Commission hearings, they were a joke. And I was with a group called 9-11 Families for Peaceful Tomorrows, family members of 9-11 who were very active in uh, trying to stop the war in both Afghanistan and Iraq. In the commission here, it was when Condoleezza Rice uh, spoke. She, the only thing she was trying to do was filibuster. And you got sick and tired of the commissioners. They were just so obsequious to all the, uh, the testimony going forth. And the, I guess the big moment for me, after that meeting with Condoleezza Rice, I was just livid. I was angry. I said, this is the biggest shame you've ever seen. And from that day, I've kept that anger. And I made my entire life revolving around 9-11 and the official story. So as far as their official story, there's nothing in there that I think is true. If you look at the 9-11 Commission report, but even the 9-11 commissioners have stated that this is basically a sham. What happened to Bobby? He did not work in the World Trade Center. He worked at Merrill Lynch across the street. He was assistant vice president of media relations. Merrill Lynch had a, a meeting on the 106th floor. So I think at the last moment before going over to Merrill Lynch, because he was supposed to report the work at nine, he decided to go into the Trade Center. We're one of the few that have taken bodies home, a full body. I've done my 9-11 work. I, tra I did travel around the world talking for Peaceful Tomorrows. We did a stone walk in Japan, uh, emphasizing the idiocy of war and the idiocy of uh, uh, having nuclear weapons and using nuclear weapons. And... We were there to commemorate the 60th anniversary of the dropping of the bombs in Japan. I, I continue doing some work with Peaceful Tomorrows, but in the last five years, that's all I do is 9-11. Any chance I get to talk to people, I want to talk to people. If you spent any time looking at the 9-11 Commission report and you read anything, you know it was not an investigation. It was purely an exposition. They were laying out some things, hoping that people would accept it. But even the 9-11 Commission report uh, members said, of course, it was a sham. So this is a big problem for me. My son was murdered, and I really want people to understand that. My son was murdered, and we've never had an investigation. I've done my investigation. I feel I've done all the investigating I can do. And I want the world to know what my conclusions are, that Al-Qaeda did not attack the United States. Muslims had nothing to do with, with, with the murder of my son. Huge explosions going on before the planes hit the towers. Well, if my son died before the planes hit the towers, then we got a big time problem. Who did it? And, you know, we we'll go back to the 9-11 uh, Commission report. They spend two lines, two lines on page 285 of the Commission report talking about, the da they didn't talk about the damage in the basement, but there was huge damage in the basement before the planes hit or just as the planes hit. Tremendous uh, explosions that coming up from the uh, basement into the lobby. And they explained it in one line, two lines on page 285 of the commission report stating that a fireball came down one, one shaft because there was no other shaft that could have taken it the fireball down to the basement or to the lobby because it was a three-tiered system of elevators. So only one shaft could have carried a fireball. And I'm not saying a fireball didn't come down, but it stopped at 77. It stopped at 22, floor 22, which was the command center of the whole World Trade Center. Stopped in the lobby. It stopped in basement one. Stopped in basement two. Went all the way down to basement six. Actually damaged the path uh, platform, which is the subway system, which is 200 feet. So the whole story is so impossible. Yet people, again, won't spend that little bit of time to find this information out. My son died from an explosion. It was well, that's a problem. Who put these bombs in to bring these buildings down? It took experts to do this, and it had to be an inside job. 
all you have to do is go to the 9-11 Commission book itself. All the information in that book is based upon torture and torturing Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, Abu Zubaydah, who was an innocent bystander, yet he was tortured for years. Abu Zubaydah, who was supposed to be the, one of the top three instigators of 9-11, along with, well, in 2009, they say Zubida, Abu is, uh, had nothing to do with 9-11. How much press do we get about that? None. Zero. The press in the United States is just as guilty as anyone else in this country as far as the death of my son, because they refuse to cover anything. They are an absolute disgrace. You and I would confess to the crime of 9-11 if we are tortured. I, I think it's very important that you understand history. You know, making war is the most important thing for any nation, it seems. Of course, 9-11 is a perfect point because now we have reason to have perpetual war forever because we'll always use the war on terror. Anti-war community really didn't want to embrace 9-11 because they felt, well, it was okay to go to war in Afghanistan. And I said to them, why is it okay to go to war in Afghanistan? And we don't have any proof that bin Laden had anything to do with 9-11. At this, certainly back in 2003, we don't have any information. And why are we going, you know, we shouldn't be going to war. So why aren't we demonstrating against the war in Afghanistan? Well, they didn't want any parts of it. And that's why I dropped out of the anti-war movement. These wars are in my son's name. Every war that we have, how many times does Obama use it? How many times did Bush use it? How many times does the press use it? This is the war on terror. And so many anti-war people would say to me, well, isn't this like any other event in history? False flag in Vietnam, but don't we have to move on and just fight the system and not keep talking about 9-11? Well, the war on terror can go on forever. All we need is just one false flag event, and then we'll, we'll use the war on terror as a means to go to war. And so the importance of 9-11 is, and even to Syria, we want full dominance of the world. We want full dominance of the oil regions of the Middle East. We do not want any competition. I mean, we can go back to the 50s uh, with uh, Alan Dulles. He said, this is not about communism. This is about controlling the natural resources of the world. It's always been that way. And that's why history is so important. Let's go to South America, Central America. We talk about free trade, but it's not a matter of free trade. It's a matter that our corporations can go into Ecuador into Colombia, into El Salvador. We should have the freedoms to put our huge corporate entities within those countries. So we uh, eliminate all leftists, and I'm sorry, all leftist uh, opposition throughout Central and South America. And that's again why I speak, you know, the history is so important. This is what we do. This is what we have always done. And it goes back it, it just uh, the other day, the CIA, it's been proven that we orchestrated the 53 uh, overthrow in Iran of Mossadegh. Why? It was because of oil. We didn't want these people nationalizing their oil. Can you imagine people wanting to have their own oil and share in the production of their oil? I mean, that is obscene, according to us. Well, we admitted it. Well, we've been doing this forever. Well, this is another false flag. 9-11 was a false flag. And look at it. We're at constant war. Well, there's a lot of people making out billions and billions of dollars on these wars. And we don't want stable governments in the Middle East because we just put our, our, our military into these countries. That's what we want. If we had stable governments, then they might decide to do exactly what Iran did. Well, let's you know, take care of our people. Let's uh, even Hussein in Iraq. God, they had free education. They had free health care. Well, we've bombed that place back to the Stone Age. The people have nothing. And this is the way we want things. We want chaos in the Middle East. I mean, that's... That's been defined back in the Senate 70s, where, you know, it, it's about creating chaos. This is how we control the world. So that's 9-11 in a nutshell. And we have that forever because all they have, all they have to do is mention 9-11. All they have to do is mention the war on terror. And all you need, and there's certainly been many times in history about false flags, specifically in Vietnam, 1963, the Gulf of Tonkin, Look at all these people that died, 3 million Vietnamese, 58,000 Americans. But no one goes to jail. Look at Iraq. It's been proven that everyone lied about Iraq, but no one goes to jail. Well, it's the same thing in Syria. 
we don't have, we don't have any proof. Why would anybody believe what the United States or Britain says about Syria, about chemical weapons? You know, how can we trust them? But the thing is, we're suddenly going to go to war. And they're still institute the war on terror. We have to stop this, this terror. I've read certainly enough that saying that the rebels were infiltrated by Al-Qaeda, that they're the ones. So I don't know. I have, no one's given me any proof. Why should I believe the United States? We do not like secular uh, leaders. It was a secular country. And that's the last thing we want because they become very independent. And that's why it, it's perfect for our State Department for using the war on terror. We just can't. And, you know, of course, this is you know, the ultimate target using chemical weapons. Of course, everybody talks about the possibility of World War III. And God knows what will happen. It's insane, absolutely insane. But, you know, I, I hate using the word Al-Qaeda. It's basically the base. So really, we're paying mercenaries to do our bidding in all these countries. Without the war on terror, we have no grounds to stand on. All these people have died. Millions of people have died in my son's name because that's what they're using. And it's a travesty. And I feel bad because you're losing children. People don't look at it that way. You're losing children every single day. And, you know, of course, Iraq. Look at Iraq now. Who had a tyrant? There's no question about it. But you don't bomb it back to the Stone Ages. Look at Afghanistan. The poor people are never going to survive. And this is all because my son died. And then the story of how he died was an absolute lie. Everybody, I mean, the commissioners admit that the story was an absolute lie. We tortured these people. But everything I'm talking about is from first-hand information. The 9-11 Commission report, uh, people refuse to look, in, look into. But all that I'm talking about is information, again, from the firemen, policemen, EMS workers, so forth and so on. And uh, their testimony. They gave testimony immediately after and going through the year 2002. So there is eyewitnesses. You know, eyewitnesses that were down in the basement, refrigeration systems being blown out. Uh, William Rodriguez, of course, is a very good friend of mine, uh, where a friend of his comes running into the room and he has, you know, skin hanging off. Witnesses, uh, I think Lieutenant Walsh had walked into the, the towers, at, you know, maybe less than five minutes uh, after the first plane hit, and the whole lobby was blown out. And all the center um, elevators were blown out. Now, when you talk to center elevators, that's an impossibility because, again, elevators that you took from the lobby only went up maybe 30 floors. Then you had to get off and get up another elevator shaft. Then you have to get off maybe to 70th floor. And I don't, I don't have the grids right there. But in other words, it was a three-tier system. You only had three elevators that went from the bottom to the top two express elevators on the north and south side, six and seven, and they were inoperable that day. But uh, freight elevator 50 is the only one that went from um, the basement to the top. So they're attributing the fireball coming down. They don't explain it's just 50, but they're attributing the fireball coming down and creating all this damage. Well, this Lieutenant Walsh walked in. He says, all these center elevators were knocked out. They were, the doors were blown off. Well, that's impossible if you didn't have anything coming down the shaft because anything coming into the lobby, they weren't connected to the top. So therefore, a fireball could not have come down all the way to the lobby, except in one instance, which is the freight elevator. And that's impossible because the guy who was running the 50 elevator survived. He had a broken leg. Uh, and what happens when elevators, when their cables are cut, Okay, now where he was, uh, he was approximately on the 30th floor when the plane hit and his cables were cut. So he started falling and he thought, of course, he was going to die. And he was falling about the B1 level, basement level one. And the thing stopped. And then there was an explosion from the outside that blew the doors in. So this is after his cables were cut and he had a broken leg. But both people in the in the. Um, elevator survived. So all, so just if even any elevator and the cables were cut, they had an emergency system where after a few uh, levels or a few floors, they would come to immediate stop. So again, the whole story and people would say, well, the noise down in the basement level 
was car 50 coming down and crashing. And everybody thought that this was an explosion. Well, that's a lie. It didn't happen. He came down to be one. He didn't come from the top anyway, and he survived. Now, if there was a huge fireball coming down an elevator shaft, and you're in that elevator, I guarantee you're dead because the top of an elevator is very, it's very flimsy. In other words, a fireball would come through. So, you know, I challenge anyone to debate whether or not the fireball, but then let's again talk about the damage. The damage, now you, uh, the, the lobby, every floor is 207 feet by 207 feet. Well, that's a huge area. A fireball is a subsonic explosion, meaning that it goes, it does not go to the speed of sound. Uh, a, a fireball will maybe travel at 100 meters per second. While a, a, a sonic or a, a supersonic explosion, which I feel that's what was happening in the towers at the time, travels at approximately 400 meters per second. And it comes out with a shock wave. And what happened to Bobby, I think, he just, by mistake, happened to walk in just around 846, the detonation, not a deflagration like a, a fireball, a fireball just is not that powerful. Say a fireball did blow out uh, an elevator door. Well, it would not blow out all the windows in the, in the lobby. And again, you're talking 207 by 207. That's a big, big area. It doesn't have the power. And in the lobby, things weren't singed. What happens in a detonation, you have a tremendous shock wave, which I think Bobby got hit by because he did not have any burns on him. He had post-mortem burns. And then heat follows that. So it, it's a tremendous shock wave, which creates a massive damage. And it, it, and it shows you that massive damage in the basement. Again, if you look into all the testimony of all these people that were down there, things that were happening down there were just, a, you know, again, a refrigeration system, uh, stairwells being destroyed, uh, cars being destroyed, the path, the subway platform was destroyed, which again is over 200 feet away. A, a, a fireball just can't do that. It's impossible. So to me, that's a, that's a real big story for me because these explosions, and I'm not making this up myself. I'm, God knows I've read so many accounts. I've talked to so many people. This happened. There was explosions before and immediately after the planes hit. And I think the purpose of this, you would, people say, well, why do that? Well, they just had to create a chaotic situation. Can you imagine if two planes hit the towers? And, of course, people would die, and it's a horrible tragedy. But there was no excuse to go to a war. How can it was a criminal event? Well, they made it such a grandiose thing with the towers coming down, and everybody, everybody will have that ingrained in their head till the day they die. And every 9-11 you will see be shown what happens. These are the terrorists. This is the beginning of the war on terror. And it's 100% absolute lie. And that's what I want people to know. You know, I would be willing to give people amnesty and because we have to stop these idiotic wars. There's just too many innocent people dying around the world. You know, I tell you what, I would forgive everyone, everyone, if we stop this idiocy. You know, let the world evolve the way it should be evolving. So that's why I think history is so important. It's just to look at it as one event, I think you know, you're, you're in trouble. If you read history, again, this is what we do. We've done it in the United States, certainly Operation Gladio, you know, after the war. And this has been proven, you know, bombs in subway stations, just so they could prove that the communists were evil. And this goes on and on and on. And with the war on terror, it's so easy to do now. You just need one event. And, of course, the chemical weapons. You know, why would you believe the United States? Look what they did in Iraq. These people are war criminals. Obama is a war criminal. He's dropping drones. He's killing innocent people. We have to have people rethinking 9-11. And that's my only goal in life. You know, I, I will always tell people, don't believe me. Read. Look into it. Well, at uh, Times Square, we're going to have a big 60-foot poster, Rethink 9-11. And then we're going to have, uh, I'm going to be there. I had a lawyer call me last week, or 
been a conservative Republican all these years. And he called and he said, look, Bob, he says, I want to leave this country. He says, I started reading. I just started. And just a week ago, this is last week, he said, I, I decided 9-11 was what you've been saying. And he's not saying because of me, but you know, I had to be talking to someone else and he had heard the conversation. And he said, just in a week, he's to see. But if, if you just put your time in, you know, my, my grandchildren could understand it. That if you know the history of false flag, you know the history of war, countries will do this. It's very Machiavellian. The ends justify the means. These people think that they are doing a good job. What's, well, there you have it. I mean, you know, if you present it, I met uh, Huckabee, Governor Huckabee from Arkansas, and has his own TV show on now. And he was a standard, a real hard right Republican. Well, he was in the wings after I left, and he looked at me and he says, I just can't believe this. You know, I said, well, there it is. It's a demolition. And But the thing is, they don't have the guts to do anything, or they, they don't have the willpower. Of course, they're going to lose their jobs if they talk contrary to what, you know, happened. So it, it, people, if they look into it, they'll understand that it is a lie. Everything is a lie. You know, the Tower 7 came down from demolition. Well, someone had to put bombs in there. So everything Bush said, everything Cheney said is wrong. And, of course, you go into Iraq war. We, everyone knows. Tony Blair lied. Bush lied. Cheney lied. And all these people have died. Colin Powell lied. Our newspapers lied. You know, the New York Times, the so-called liberal paper, they lie. Everyone lied. And yet nothing's happened. And yet we're ready to go to war because we believe our country, our, our governments are incredible. The people have to take it over. I don't know how it's going to happen, but it has to be done. This is the only thing I can do is talk to you, talk to the world, because in the United States, no one wants to talk. And every 9-11, it happens. I get a chance to speak to people. So the fact that people in London will hear this. And I'm going to be on uh, Russia today. I'll be in New York, then I'm going to do a show out of Moscow. I want people of the world to know how I feel. I can say for sure that my son died. He was murdered. I can say for sure that there was never an investigation. That's easy to prove. I can, sh I can show people how my son died. He died from an explosion. He never got a chance to run. All his injuries were to his face and his chest. He died instantly within a second. Well, that doesn't happen from a fireball coming down 103 floors. So there in the 9-11 commission, that's another lie. So I, that's, and if I can get that story out to the world, and that's what I do. But certainly there's been a lot of politicians around the world that have you know, talked to me, and they know it but they just don't yet have the power to do something about it. And uh, so we'll, we just have to wait and see. Maybe this will be the, Syria will be somewhere, someone's gonna step in and say, no, this is all bogus. I can empathize with you know, mothers and fathers around the world. So for people to be involved in this, especially a family member, you just say to yourself, why am I doing this? Nothing's changing. And the thought that we're gonna again go to war, it's, it's, it's so depressing to me. Europe went through Operation Gladio. They understand what governments do. You know, we don't hear alternative voices. Well, you know, I'd love to go to London. I'd love to go to places around the world because that's when I feel optimistic, when I see people around the world. People see it. Here in the United States, they don't see it. And to do this, it really helps me to talk to you, to hear a story of other people that are doing uh, talking about it. I, I want to make it a better world. This is my life's work. It's been great talking to you. Take care.